What can an ancient Greek geezer who started a cult that worshipped numbers teach us about triangles? Let's find out. How's it going folks? My name is Liam, aka Mr Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and in this GCSE Maths Revision video we are going to be covering Pythagoras' theorem. First thinking about who Pythagoras was, then what his theorem was, and then working through some example exercises in which we can put the theorem to good use. Before I go much further then, I recommend you've got a pen and paper in front of you so that you can make notes if need be. I've even got some exercises throughout this video too, which I recommend you give a go because practice makes perfect. And that's what's going to help you absolutely nail your application of Pythagoras' theorem in your studies. All right, I've said the name Pythagoras an awful lot already in this video. Just who or what is a Pythagoras? So Pythagoras of Samos was an ancient Greek philosopher who lived from somewhere around the year 570 BC to the year 495 BC. He was actually super influential, informing the works of Plato and Aristotle, who you may have heard of. Now, our friend Pythagoras here was credited with a bunch of mathematical and scientific discoveries, including the theory of proportions, which is a mathematical theory with design and architectural importance, the sphericity of the earth, so Pythagoras was no flat earther, and he also thought that the globe should be divided into five climatic zones in order to account for the differing weather and temperatures people experience across the world. Interestingly, Pythagoras founded a movement that thought that numbers were sacred and made up basically everything in the universe, like absolutely anything Pythagoras thought could be explained by numbers. This movement gained characteristics of a religious sect or cult with Pythagoras as its leader. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is a bit of an interesting choice. Anyway, most relevantly to us today, Pythagoras was credited with a bunch of mathematic discoveries, including the theorem that is named after him. But then, what is Pythagoras' theorem? Pythagoras theorises that, for a right angle triangle, the square of the length of the longest side, also known as the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two shorter sides. So the first short side squared plus the second short side squared is equal to the longest side squared. So let's consider a right angled triangle for a moment. There we go. When dealing with shapes, especially when trying to figure out how long their sides are, it's usually helpful to label them. So the hypotenuse, remember that's the longest side, is one that we typically label with the letter C, whereas the two shorter sides are usually labelled with A and B. To translate Pythagoras' theorem across into those labels then, we know that the length of the longest side squared, so c squared, is equal to the shortest side squared, a squared, plus the next shortest side squared, b squared. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Now this is usually rearranged just a little bit, with the c squared going after, rather than before, the equals sign, which leaves us with a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now that funky little a squared plus b squared equals c squared formula lends itself to a very neat set of numbers from time to time, which are called Pythagorean triples. Now these triples are sets of three numbers, your a, b and c, that are positive whole numbers that neatly fit into Pythagoras' theorem. You see, more often than not, you're going to end up with at least one number that has a bunch of decimals in it when dealing with this formula. So one example of a Pythagorean triple are the numbers 3, 4 and 5. Let's take our formula for a second and then put the a, b and c values into it. This tells us that, should these numbers actually be a Pythagorean triple, 3 squared plus 4 squared should be the same as 5 squared. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and 5 by 5 is 25. But does that check out? 
let's do that last bit of addition to finally solve this equation. And there we go. 9 plus 16 is indeed 25, which means that 3, 4 and 5 do indeed form a Pythagorean triple. Now this is also apparently true for the number set 5, 12 and 13. So there's our formula and there's those values plugged into it. In resolving those squares, we find out that 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, and 13 squared is 169. But does the maths check out? Well, if you add 5 to 144, you get 149, plus the 20 that's then left over, and you get to 169. So 5, 12, and 13 are indeed a Pythagorean triple. But what happens when the numbers are not so nice and neat? What happens when you are given the lengths of the two shorter sides and are then asked to try to find out the length of the longer side, the hypotenuse? Well, let's take this example. We are told that our A is equal to three centimeters and that our B is equal to five centimeters. We then want to figure out the length of C to three significant figures. So let's begin with our formula, and then let's insert our known values, so substituting a for 3 and b for 5. Resolving those squares leaves us with 9 plus 25 equaling c squared, and when those are added together, we get 34 as being equal to c squared. To get to c, we then need to square root each side, which means that c is equal to the square root of 34, which I estimate will be somewhere between 5 and 6, given that 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, and 34 is of course between those numbers. Now a quick trip to the calculator tells us that the square root of 34 is 5.83 to 3 significant figures, and so c is equal to approximately 5.83 centimetres. Let's have a look at another example, in which A is 6 cm long and B is 11 cm long. As ever, let's start with our formula and then insert our known values. A is 6 and B is 11. Sorting out those squares leaves us with 36 plus 121 equaling C squared, which then also means that 157 is equal to C squared once we've added those two numbers together. We want c though, not c squared, and so we now need to find the square root of 157 to get to c. Root 157 should be somewhere between 12 and 13, because 12 squared is 144 and 13 squared is 169. And our good pal the calculator tells us that the root of 157 is in fact 12 and a half to three significant figures. As such, c is 12.5 centimetres long. For both of these examples, I hope you can see that I have followed the same steps each time. I begin with the formula, substitute in our known values, and then resolve their squares. Once I've done that, I add those two values together to get to c squared, and so then I square root that value to find out what c is. Importantly though, I always make sure to add in the units at the end. Don't Ever forget those because missing those units out could lose you a lot of marks in an assessment situation. Okay, so you've seen me give those examples a go, and so now it is time for you to put what we've just discussed into practice. If you need a reminder, here are the steps that you need to make in order to reach the answer. If you're going to give us a go, I recommend you pause the video now because I'm going to go over the answers in five. Four, three, two, and one. So if you got 5.39 centimeters for the first example, well done. Your workings out may sound a little bit like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Therefore, two squared plus five squared equals C squared. 2 squared is 4 and 5 squared is 25, and so 4 plus 25 equals c squared, or in other words, 29 equals c squared. To get to c, you would need to find the square root of 29, which I think should be somewhere between 5 and 6, because 29 is between 25 and 36. 
a trip to the calculator tells us that root 29 is 5.39 when taken to three significant figures, and so in this example, c is equal to 5.39 centimetres. The answer for the second example is 10.6 centimetres, so well done if you got that answer. Your workings out might sound something like this. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Therefore, 7 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 7 times 7 is 49, and 8 times 8 is 64. So 49 plus 64 is, you know it, c squared. 49 plus 64 is 113, and so that is the value of c squared. To get to c then, we need to find out the square root of 113, which should be somewhere between 10 and 11, because 10 squared is 100, and 11 squared is 121, and 113 is between those two numbers. A quick sum on the calculator tells us that root 113 is 10.6301 blah 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 blah, which we can just call 10.6 because we're working to three significant figures. Remembering to add our units at the very end, that means that in the second example, c is equal to 10.6 centimetres. How did you get on? Feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. Here's the cool thing about Pythagoras' theorem though. It can be rearranged. So pretend you've been given a right angle triangle in which the length of the hypotenuse is given to you, and so is the length of one of the shorter sides. The other short side though is kept as a mystery from you, and it's the very thing you're trying to figure out. So how would you go about that? As always, we should begin with Pythagoras' theorem. Now in the example here, we want to find the value of b, so we want to get b all on its own on one side of the equal sign. To do that, we would first subtract a squared from both sides of the equation to make sure that it remains balanced, which means you might get something that looks a little bit like this. Now all those a squareds are looking a little bit messy to me, but on the left hand side of the equation we have a plus a squared, the first one, and a minus a squared, the second one, which thankfully cancel out, leaving us with b squared equaling c squared minus a squared. To get to b then, we would just have to find out the square root of the result of c squared minus a squared. Importantly, we've got to do that bit in the brackets first before doing the square rooting, otherwise we just get the wrong answer. All of this as well applies to a if a is the unknown and b and c are the known values. The equation would just have a and b swapped around. So then, let's have a go at solving this equation for b, once again keeping our final answer to three significant figures and remembering to add in the units at the end. So we've already got that rearranged equation from just earlier. Next, we should plug in our known values for c and a. c is 7 and a is 3. Just like we do when we aren't rearranging the equation, we then need to resolve the squares first, which tells us that b equals the square root of the product of 49 minus 9, because 49 is 7 squared and 9 is 3 squared. Now 49 take 9 is 40, and so we then know that b is equal to the square root of 40. B is probably going to come between 6 and 7 then, because 40 is between 36, 6 squared, and 49, 7 squared. And our calculator indeed confirms that this is the case, for entering root 40 into it comes out to 6.32 when taken to three significant figures, which we then add our units to, thus getting to the answer that B is 6.32 centimetres long. So how about some more worked examples then? To begin, let's have a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse is 11 centimetres long and also has a shorter side that is 4 centimetres long. The B side here is what we want to figure out. So as ever, let's begin with our Pythagorean theorem, which we're then going to rearrange to get B squared on its own by subtracting A squared from either side. We'll square root things later on to keep it simpler. Right, so next we plug in those values for c and a, which tells us that b squared is equal to 11 squared minus 4 squared. That minus is super important, so don't forget it. 
11 squared is 121, and 4 squared is 16, which we can then enter into our equation like this, and then we can subtract 16 from 121 to end up with 105. 105 is what b squared is though, and we want b, so we've got to square root both sides. Root 105, the calculator says, is 10.2 to three significant figures. And once we've got our units in there, we can finally say once and for all that b equals 10.2 centimetres. In our next example, we are told that C is 12 centimetres and B is 8 centimetres, and we have to figure out what A is to three significant figures. As ever, let's start with our equation, which we're then going to rearrange by subtracting B squared from each side. Next, we need to substitute in our known values and resolve their squares, which tells us that A squared is equal to 144 minus 64, which comes out to be 80. To get to A, we have to square root 80, which the calculator tells me is 8.94 to three significant figures. Once we've got our units in there then, we know that A is equal to 8.94 centimetres. And just like earlier, here are a couple of exercises for you to work through. In case you need reminding of the steps to follow, here is a quick guide for you. So, for both of these exercises, can you find out the length of the unknown side of the triangle? Remember to record your answer to three significant figures, and don't forget to include units either. If you're actually doing these examples yourself, now is your time to pause the video, work them out, and share your answers down in the comment section, because I'm going to give you the answers in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, if you got B equaling 9.00 centimetres for the third exercise, well done. Your workings may sound something like this. Listen up to the steps I go through if you didn't quite manage to get this one right. So, I would begin with my formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which I would then rearrange to be B squared equals C squared minus A squared. I would then add in my known values to get b squared equals 15 squared minus 12 squared, which would become b squared equals 225 minus 144 once I resolved those squares. 225 minus 144 equals 81, and so that's what b squared equals. To get to b, I don't even need a calculator because I know that the square root of 81 is 9. And so B is equal to 9.00 centimetres. How lovely. The answer for question four is 18.3 centimetres. So well done if you got that. Your workings out probably look something a little bit like this. And once again, listen out in case you didn't quite get this one right. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, which is then rearranged to be A squared equals C squared minus B squared. Substituting in our known values then gets us to a squared equaling 20 squared minus 8 squared, or 400 minus 64 once you have resolved those squares, and once again 336 once you have done that piece of subtraction. So if a squared is 336, a must be the square root of 336, which is something like 18.3303027798, or 18.3 to three significant figures. Once we have plonked in those units then, we get to 18.3 centimetres as being the length of A. Clearly my triangle is not to scale. And that is where I'm going to bring this video to a close. Well done for making it through this crash course in Pythagoras' theorem. I'm aware that there were a lot of numbers and letters and A squares and B squares and C squares in this one. So well done for sticking it through to the very end. I hope it's given you a bit of a better understanding about how to deal with this sort of maths question from now on. As ever, I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are studying or revising, please remember to take frequent short breaks because a burned out student is not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you deserve to be. So our good mate Pythagoras teaches us that for a right angle triangle, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Cheers mate.